Welcome everybody. Give everybody just a minute to get in. Uh, I know we just opened up the room. We've got a lot of people coming through. Jump into the chat as always and share with us where you're calling in from today. Um, and where are you at on your 2021 planning? Again, we'll let everybody just take a moment to get in. I'm gonna get started here in just a few seconds. I know not everybody's from Milwaukee and Oklahoma City. So we'll assume that a bunch more are getting ready to trickle in. Here they come. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. We're going to dive right in. I've got a jam-packed session uh, for everybody today. I'm really, really excited to share this 2021 planning. Uh, it could not be more timely. Uh, as business owners, we obviously have to get in front of our teams. We have to be ready to bring this strategy and this plan together for 2021 very quickly here. Um, and if we don't get started, some of us maybe have already started. Others are, are getting ready to get started. Nonetheless, this is the season. And we think about how, I don't want to say brutal, but how just ups and downs 2020 has been. It's been, some has been highs for others. Others have really seen a dip in business because of everything that's happened in the year 2020. Um, what's so interesting is how do you take a year like that and plan forward for 2021? And that's what makes this conversation so interesting. So uh, really excited to get into the details with everybody today. Uh, for those of you that have not met myself uh, or you've been maybe one of our webinars prior, uh, my name is Casey Clark. I am the CEO of Cultivate Advisors. Uh, my background is I actually started in franchising and, and grew an organization uh, prior to then uh, creating Cultivate Advisors as a co-founder. Um, and so we've been having a lot of fun this year. And we just want to thank everybody who, uh, joining today for letting us work with you this year and, and be your partner uh, to help you grow and scale this organization. So we just have a lot of appreciation for that and uh, so glad to have you here today. To give you an idea of what's going to happen, it's a 60-minute webinar. I know we've had some confusion uh, in the past. We uh, Last couple months, because of everything that's going on with COVID, we've been doing a bit of these roundtables. We are going to slow down on that and not do the roundtables today. However, we are looking for ways in 2021 to bring in more of a roundtable and networking event only. We're going to start to separate the ideas of this webinar to bring some really killer content to your, uh, to your feet that you can utilize in your business versus bringing uh, a networking event or, or some type of other element to meet other people within uh, the community. I know some people want different aspects of it. We've decided to make that split. So today is only 60 minutes. Um, we're going to be kicking off with just a few expectations. I'm going to get right in the content. There is going to be Q&A after. So write down some questions in the chat as we're going along or write them down. No, I'm going to open up some space for that at the end today. We're going to open up more space than we have in the past for the Q&A portion. I'll do just one or two quick updates so you know what's upcoming with other events, and then we'll get you on your way and back into the business. So thanks for taking the time if you're leveraging lunch or whatever you're doing. On the today's content, I'm going to talk about the mindset. What mindset do you have to get into to set up your 2021 plans? I'm going to walk you through my methodology. A lot of the advisors follow something similar um, in terms of the methodology, so excited to walk you through what that looks like. We're going to do a bit of a workshop, actually, as we go through it as well. Uh, this is going to help you just start to get a couple minutes of thinking high level on the business to then actually go put some work in post and, and connect with your advisor further on it. And then lastly, I'm going to hit on the collaborative planning side. A lot of you have grown where you have teams, either you're leading the team or you even have leaders in place. How do you approach planning with that dynamic to get the most amount of buy-in possible? That's what I'm going to slow down on the collaborative side. So very, very excited to bring that front and center uh, to help uh, drive the planning portion through Q4 before we all kick off a strong 2021. My quick expectations, always want to set them. Just reminder, I'm bringing content from all five of our stages uh, that I know most of you are aware of. So just keep in mind, I'm going to be giving different levels of content. So if you get bored or one or two sections, look as an opportunity to validate something you already have in your head. Secondly, you've got to be selfish. This is not going to be rocket science in terms of the work that we're doing. Uh, this is stuff that you can find online. We're just bringing it to a very simple, formal approach of how you can bring this to the business so you can spend time running your business versus going out and finding this information. But be selfish. And last but not least, I'm going to be jumping. Your job is to find one or two key things you can take away. I'm going to share a lot. You're not going to be able to take everything away that I give you today. So make sure you're listening for like, oh, that's what I want to go shift or that's what I want to change in the business. That's going to set you up for success. So as always, jump in the chat. Let us know any thoughts you have along the way. I'm going to have some polls to keep a pulse on the group. And after, we'll have some post resources. Let's get into it. So I'm going to start right with mindset. Mindset is really hard as a business owner. We obviously always have these ups and downs as a business owner that we're always dealing with. I know you know what I'm referring to. 
And I think we can all agree that even if our business grew with everything going on with the pandemic and other elements of 2020, I have to imagine all of us as business owners at one point had a small emotional breakdown. At one point, it had to have happened because the uncertainty and the unclarity of what was happening definitely were testing nerves. And I think a lot of you can agree and understand that. Now, my hope is that our advisors were there to help comfort you and help you know, be that partner for you to work through those elements. But at the end of the day, we all know that this has been a nerve testing year. And how do we move that into 2021? So I thought it to be apparent to slow down and talk about mindset. So I want to jump to a poll immediately. I want to see where everybody's at. I just want to launch this poll that says, how are you performing in revenue this year versus last year? And the options that we're going to give you here as that poll gets launched, are you down by over 25%? Are you down 5 to 25%? Are you mostly flat? Have you grown by 5 to 25%? Or have you grown even over by 25%? So let's go ahead and get that poll launched. And I haven't seen the poll launch to my knowledge. There it goes. All right. So you should see that pop up. So again, where are you at? Have you grown? Are you mostly flat? Are you down? Let's get some ideas. And as everybody's kind of filling this in, we are not going to share the answers of this just for confidentiality purposes, but I will speak to what I'm seeing on some of the answers. So it's fairly spread based on what I'm seeing. Um, there's quite a few actually that have grown. I, I'm really excited to hear that. I knew some of that from the advisor's work, but it's really great to hear that a majority of the businesses here are flat or have grown. There are some based on specific industries that are absolutely down. Looks like a few are down by over 25%. So some of you that are coming in to this webinar today, you're down over 25%. You're going to have to really work on where your mind is at. But I also push those that have also grown. Will that actually continue? What, what's causing that growth? Is it organic or is it something in the marketplace? We're gonna have to work through that here in a moment. I actually wanna do a second poll. So let's go ahead and kill that poll. Let's launch another one. Uh, last, this last one was for revenue. And I, I know the numbers, I wrote down the percentages so I could allocate this. I'd like to launch another poll now on how much profit, what have you seen in profit this year versus last year? I wanna see where the discrepancy is. So we just launched that one, same numbers. Are you down? Are you down by five to 25? Are you over? Have you grown by 25% plus? And I just want to get an idea of what the different counts are. Give everybody another 30 seconds here to answer this. Going once, going twice. Okay, thank you everybody for submitting this. So this is really interesting. I know you can't see this, but I'm going to tell you a little bit of what I'm looking at. So we had about, you know, uh, call it 30 to 35, about 30, oh wow, about 40% actually that said they're down of the, the members that are on the uh, the call today. They are down from everything that's happened this year. But what's so cool is only 20% are actually down in profit. What that means is that there was a lot of decisions made to protect cash and a lot of profit. Now that's not overly surprising. It's the only thing that Cultivate Advisors behind the scenes has been talking about is how do we increase profit for the companies? Because we knew that was the folks that had to make maintain this year. The flats are aligned and then on the growth, those obviously jump up quite a bit. So kudos to all of you for growing in profit. You're learning how to be more profitable. Now the question is, are you gonna give up some of that profit to continue to create growth? Are you gonna take capital to create that growth? These are a lot of big strategic decisions you have to make as you move into 2021, which is why your mindset's gonna be so important. So we can go ahead and kill that poll. Thank you for that. Um, and we'll have some more polls as we keep going. So what is different in planning for 2021? Why slow this down? It's the unknown. We don't know, is there a second wave around the way? What's gonna happen, right? And these are some of the things that I'm thinking about. Are we gonna need to pivot or weather a different storm we don't know about? I look at the fires out west, I look at some of the other things happening across the globe and I go, we don't fully know how many pivots are still gonna need to take place as business owners in 2021. Is there going to be a second wave with COVID? Is that something we're gonna have to be prepared for? Will there be economic turbulence from the election? That's mostly a US thing, obviously, but I know a lot of our Canadian businesses do operate in the US. Is that gonna be something we're gonna to have to work through and what's coming up with that? And will past data actually be accurate for us to plan from? That's a big question I'm thinking about right now is going, is 2020 or 2019, what year do I use? Do I summarize them? Uh, do I pull in? How do I account for all the shifts I've made uh, that were the beginning of the year versus now? These are all things I'm assuming you're starting to think about when I tell you, you need to be planning for 2021. You start to go, okay, how am I gonna work through all this? And that's my job today is to help give you a bit more of a framework that I think is gonna help you navigate it. 
But this mindset is all about you getting centered, right? Your body is obviously always in present, but where is your mind? Are you pissed off about the past, right? Are you mad about the past? Are you, are you, are you frustrated at this year? Are you burnt out? Are you sick of being on Zoom, <laughs> right? Are, are you done with that element? Or are you already living in the future? Are you actually too far out though? You're, you're not even worried about what's going on with you right now. You're actually just so far out just dreaming that you're paralyzed. I find that a lot of entrepreneurs can go both sides on the spectrum very easily. And it's so crucial to bring you back to a grounded state. And a few things you've got to think about is just, do you need to have a funeral? So some of you that may be angry, you're frustrated, something happened in the industry, whatever it might be, are you in the denial phase? Are you resisting it? Or are you exploring and actually starting to commit and get more energy to change? Where are you at in this grid? Uh, and I call this of having that funeral of passing from, from moving from the past to the future. Because we need to move, call it one or two deltas, you know, of the delta, one or two over, sigmas over, in terms of where we're headed towards the future is what's crucial in terms of our mindset. We can't be living too much in the present, just a little to the right is what we're looking for. But also some of you may be extremely optimistic and do you actually need to face reality? Are you gonna be able to keep up what you've been doing uh, depending on your industry or depending on outside factors uh, that, and different shifts that are coming your way? So again, simple questions, but I just challenge you before you sit down to plan to ask yourself these two questions. List out the items. What do I need to have a funeral on? What do I actually need to face reality on? And I'm not really totally being fully honest with myself. Those are the two, the two questions I would encourage you to ask to get yourself in the right mindset. And these are the seven keys that I follow and that I'm thinking about this year that I would love to pass to you to take and make them your keys that'll help you get in the right grounded space. First one, take space for your planning. Don't try to do this uh, quickly or you know, in the evenings or the weekends. Give yourself permission to take a day every two weeks, literally a full day every two weeks and apply your space to start planning for 2021. You have to give yourself time to work on the business versus in the business. Number two, give your teams a space for planning. The leaders or the folks you're gonna pull plans in from, make sure they're taking space and that you're articulating what your expectations of when you want your plans completed by them by if you're doing roll-ups and you're at that stage of the business. Make sure they're taking space and you've, you've slowed that down and they're not just putting it in between days. The worst thing that can happen is you try to jump from a meeting to another meeting and then jump into doing this planning. For me personally, I find it has to be on a set day where I don't have a lot of distractions so I can really get in that strategic thought process. You're gonna to wanna to be planning out multiple scenarios. So uh, we all learned the value of being able to pivot and be more agile last year. You're going to wanna plan out multiple more scenarios than you've ran prior. This is really, really important that you slow that down to give yourself that space to plan out multiple scenarios. So have that clarity coming in so you're not getting too rigid on one plan. You're gonna be firm on the macro this year, but you're gonna to need to be more open to the path with the micro. So spend most of your energy getting the macro numbers aligned and clarity of where you wanna go. Be open that the path is most likely going to shift quite a bit. So just be conscious of that. And then simplify down to key performance indicators. I encourage you to choose no more than five objectives you wanna achieve next year that you're gonna drive all of your decisions through. That is harder than it sounds, right? It's harder than it sounds to actually do that, but that's something your advisors can help with. And then increase your cash threshold in the bank. So last year, a lot of you probably came with less cash than you probably needed based on what happened. So make sure you're increasing in your mind what that cash threshold has to be when you're trying to get that plan to work out to know, do I have the right plan based on these worst case scenarios? So I'm going to be able to pivot and I'm going to have enough cash to get through if there is another wave or something else coming at me. And then last but not least, slow down and review the time with your advisors and focus on stretching those scenarios as much as you can. And that's what's great if you could start 2021 planning now and really get in front of this, it'll give you a month or two to really spend that energy doing it. You will be more prepared than you've ever been running into the business. And what I continue to see is the, the owners that are fully planned, they know their numbers, they know their metrics, that leads to what I usually find excessive growth in the business because they actually know what levers to move and it's all about where you prioritize your time and your people's time in the business. Think of it as the people in your business are the oil in the machine that make it go. If you give them the right type of oil, they're able to guide the right things. So that's, plan that's mindset and I want you to really slow down and just 
really think, do I have enough space on my planning? And I hope that if you heard that today and you went, you know what, I have been pretty pessimistic or I have been optimistic, it grounds you. Think of that one to two sigmas to the right for the future planning. And now you're ready to start planning. So let's get into what is this methodology for planning and how can you utilize this? So I like the poll, so let's jump to another poll. Just curious for everybody on the call today, how far along are you in your 2021 planning? And let's go ahead and make sure we launch that. Have you not started yet? Are there many thoughts in, in terms of like where you're at, but you've not actually formally planned anything? Have you started the formal plan, but you've got a, quite a ways to go? Are you halfway through the formal plan? Or is your formal plan totally complete? You've already done this, you're way, you're way ahead of the, the curve. Got about 50% of people who have populated. So uh, let's keep jumping and pick our solutions here just so I can get an idea. I usually like to see about 70% before I, I wrap it up. I've got another one or two coming. All right, I think we're good there. Let's go ahead and publish that. So as you can all see, 60%, they've got a lot of thoughts. You probably have a lot of places you want to go, but you haven't actually put any formal planning together yet. Uh, and then on the next largest percentage, about 30% is I haven't started yet. So 90% is behind in 2021 planning on this call. Not surprising. Most common thing I see is that business owners are not in front of their future plans. You also self-selected to come to this webinar too, so you probably knew I probably should focus on this. So to be fair to you, I wasn't, I wasn't expecting much different of the answers. Kudos to the 10 or 12% that I'm seeing though that have started their plan and they are halfway through or you know, uh, and started to move that way. No one has said they formally completed the plan, but I would be, I would be shocked and I'd, I'd probably call it a little bit of a bluff there if that was the case. So that gives me some good perspective. So this framework I'm gonna walk you through is going to literally take you through step-by-step step how I approach strategic planning for the new year and how to set it up in a collaborative environment. I think you're gonna get a ton of value of what I'm getting ready to walk you through. Grab a piece of paper, because we're gonna do a little bit of a workshop as we're going along, or grab it, you know, pull up a note, uh, note a document within your computer, whichever your, your uh, approach is. But let me just give you the ideal framework, and then I'm gonna dig in deeper and deeper through today to give you this information. So the first thing I'm gonna start with myself is my vision and long-term goals. This is not 2021, this is beyond 2021. I'm gonna make sure I get really clear. I'll tell you more what that means in a moment. I'm then gonna dive into my annual macro goals, make sure I'm getting really clear on what has to happen in 2021. I'm gonna break that down into some KPIs. I'm gonna show you a framework of how to structure that and get to my five KPIs. And from there, I'm then gonna come up with our initiatives and I'm gonna prioritize them based on what I think will give me the biggest lift of growth in the organization and allow me to achieve what's most important to me, which is dictated by the vision through the macro, through the KPIs. Last but not least, I need to put some planning around how am I actually going to implement the initiatives. So the initiatives are prioritized, but then I also go a little one step further to make sure I understand the implementation. That step five is really needed because that's what allows you to communicate and actually bring that communication forward uh, to your team. And that's a really crucial part when I get to the buy-in portion. So these are the five steps. Now, the first question I usually get when I work with somebody on planning is, when should this happen? Not all businesses are based on the fiscal year. I understand that. So keep in mind, I'm assuming that majority of businesses today are on the fiscal year. This is the timeline I would expect. I would wanna see, so you all have a lot of work to do in two weeks. I would wanna see number one and number two, for the most part, fairly done. It could slowly merge in October. October, the KPI should be really locked and loaded because I'm refining that plan over and over again. November, we start to pick the initiatives. And then in December, we're only planning out Q1. I'm a big fan of only planning out init initiative implementation. Why? Why plan all the implementation of initiatives for the whole year for then a second wave or something big to hit us again and not being able to pivot properly? Um, so why put all that energy in space until we know that we know how this is going to work? So these are the five steps we're gonna slow down through a quick workshop. And again, this is the timeline that I think will help give you a really good idea of exactly what you said there, Cody. How the heck do you eat the elephant? One bite at a time. So let's start with vision and long-term goals. This is really simple. Why are you running a business? Why did you sign up for this crazy thing that many people are afraid to go out and do? Why? What is your why? What's getting you up in the morning and making you jacked to get in the business? And if you're not jacked when you're waking up, why not? And what do you need to change in terms of getting there for your vision? 
And a simple way that many people ask, right, is just, well, what do you want in the next three, five, 10 years? Is it a feeling you have? Is it a lifestyle you want? Is there a dollar amount you wanna be making? There's no wrong answer. Um, I heard somebody share with me the other day, they were super excited about just spreading what, they, what their, kind of their messages or what they were working on in a service business to you know, 10,000 people. And they, they, to them, that was a legacy piece. So I use that as an example, as just a simple milestone that they were pushing of what was waking them up in the morning. So to really figure out vision and really figure out long-term goals, this can take some time, as a lot of you know, you've probably done some of this work with your advisor. I'm gonna give you just a minute. Take one minute and just write down what comes to mind. What is your vision and what are long-term goals? And see how much you can write down in one minute. And I'm starting the clock now. Again, those that missed, I'm giving one minute to write down what, everything you can that comes to mind around your vision and your long-term goals. Where are you headed? Where are you wanting to go? And you're gonna need this for the rest of the workshop as we go through. So definitely make sure you have one or two small things written down. 30 seconds left. If you're getting stuck, think back to why you started the business. All right, we're coming up on a minute here in five seconds. Purpose of time, I'm gonna keep going. Now, you've got this idea of vision long-term. I want you to be thinking about this as we go through the rest of this today. And again, you're gonna to wanna to put more time on this outside of today. I'm just doing a very micro workshop to get you in the process of how they all connect the dots. Let's go to step two. This is your annual macro goal set. I like to simplify this down. What are the three most important metrics you need to hit this year? Most people choose revenue, profit, and then something else specific to their business, if it be an employee count, if it be a customer success uh, opportunity. That's generally what I see, maybe number of customers serviced, you want these high level and you want these macro. And this is what you're in pursuit of. Now, a lot of people choose their annual macro goals based on what they think is already gonna happen. That's one way to plan, that's one scenario. A different way that I actually look at it is I just write down what I want. And then I work it backwards and figure out what it would take to get there. Now, I'm generally a more optimistic person uh, and then I get brought back to reality. I know some of the folks on the team are laughing when I say that but I generally push for the stars and I somewhat fall short, but it ends up being excessive growth because I, I open my mind to go figure that out. So if I were in your shoes and you're looking to grow, I would be setting whatever those objectives are for your business a little higher than you may normally set them just to force yourself through the exercise of the rest of what I'm gonna show you of what it would take to actually get there. You can always come back and modify. It's like a perfect puzzle that's always breathing organism back and forth in terms of the high level goals to the, to the micro goals. So again, I'm gonna give everybody just a few seconds. What are those two or three high level goals that's in the back of your head right now that you think you wanna focus on for 2021? Subject to change, they're going to change, you're gonna modify them, but again, for purposes of today, this micro workshop, just write down what are two or three of those? And whatever first comes to mind is probably what's in your gut and what's most important to you, which is a good place to start. Again, if you're lost, pick a revenue, pick a profit, number of employees or number of customers serviced, maybe a customer net promoter score. Those are some common ones that I see. All right, for purpose of time, we're gonna keep going. So again, and this is the framework. I'm doing this so much slower and spending quite a bit of time as I manage this whole process, again, from October, or September all the way through December on myself, but also with my team. And I'll connect all those dots here in a moment. This third step is the KPIs are identified. So I've got my vision and long-term goals really clearly written down. I've got my annual macro goals set that are important to me, knowing they may shift as I do more of the micro work. I'm now moving into the micro planning phase. This is the part that a lot of people stop. They get excited about the vision, they get excited about the big goals. They don't wanna have to get into the weeds and do all the work. I know a lot of our, our, our clients that are joining us today probably go to the advisors and go, you're so objective, you're always looking at the data, it's kind of annoying. 
Yep, but we find that that's what tells us where to focus on the business. This is what it's going to do for you. You have to identify as a business owner, you can't lead all metrics in the business. You'll end up going nowhere. You've got to just pick these three to five you're going to go all in on that you think are going to set you up for the annual macro goals. And again, key KPIs are key performance indicators. I know most of you know that, but for those that don't, these key performance indicators, think of it as leading indicators. If I hit this metric, I'm much more likely to hit my revenue goal. So again, a very simple version is to say on the KPI to say, if I hit this sales conversion, I should hit this amount of revenue. So I'm just going to actually focus on hitting this sales conversion of every proposal we take instead of trying to hit a revenue number. It's too hard. It's a big elephant I can't eat, but I can track that conversion and do things to move the conversion by increasing skill of my team. That's where you start to understand the balance of growing a business. And I'm going to slow down and go a little further on this KPI identification because I want to show you a framework that I use and I know a lot of the advisors use to help figure out where, where do you start the planning to make it very simple. So in my world, I have a financial plan, which is the engine. I then focus on my growth side. How much, what's the sales micro plan for me to hit that revenue? What's the marketing micro plan to get a num the amount of leads that I need? Then I move over to the capacity side in order to produce or fulfill if it's a product or a service, doesn't matter. How many bodies, how much human capital do I need to invest in on the leadership side and how do I need to structure it for next year? And how many, how many people am I gonna have to recruit to fill that leadership pool? As well as how many do I need to have on the bench ready to go in case something flares in the business? And then lastly, I'm gonna do a productivity analysis around the entire engine and propeller so that way I'm very, very clear of where is time going and where are priorities going per person in the organization. And if you slow down and get the micros in all areas of this, you will find yourself having a crystal clear strategy on how to move forward. Now, a question I get a lot is like, but what about technology? Or, you know, what about our actual product we're, we're implementing? How do, you know, what's our plan around that? I look at those as more of initiatives. It's not the fundamental that's driving the business. The product is what the product is. Um, you, can, you can put that underneath any area you want in terms of the operations. But what I find is that has to be strong in order to grow a business anyhow. So just keep in mind, I'm more focusing from, from a lens of year over year growth because I find eventually you get the product to a scalable place. That's the product. So this is what we're going to focus on and go through this step by step. And I'm going to give it at a very high level today. And as some of you have seen some of this, you've done some of this with your advisors, keep that in mind, but you probably haven't got to actually come up with us in the helicopter, look over and actually see the entire layout. And that's what I'm so excited to share with everybody today. So the Performa, you've probably heard about this cash flow Performa. We pretty much made everybody make one when the pandemic hit if they didn't have one. Um, and we generally like to start with this, but sometimes it doesn't make sense and we're working on something else. I wanna give you a few tips when you go to build your Performa. And as I'm going through these tips, I also want to go ahead and launch. I'm actually going to throw out, this is the cash flow performance, a very simple tool. We're actually going to go ahead and launch that where you can download this tool and use it. You can find this on our community platform as well, just so you know, but feel free to go ahead and click download and grab it. Um, and some of you already have yours and it's tailored with your advisors. I know that. Don't feel like you need this. Um, but for, for those that maybe don't have one yet, or you've just joined with us and you're not to this with your advisor yet, this will give you a head start. So it's more detailed than prior years. I generally have been a bit more holistic on these performas, but because of all the shifts that I think majority of us have made this year, I'm feeling the need to go more detailed than I have in prior years to make sure I really understand expenditures. So I'm in the best place to pivot or shift as things start to hit me in 2021. And these future projections that I'm gonna be making, right? that's what the Performa is, is the month over month projections of where is cash gonna come in and where is cash gonna go out. As I'm walking through this, I'm gonna run a lot more scenarios as I mentioned, and I don't know how much I'm gonna be able to take historical data. Just think about all the changes that have happened in your business and all the shifts that you've made. Think about the staff shifts you've made, the compensation shifts maybe you made, the business pivots you took, the reduction in expenses. Is it even sustainable to keep running your business this way long term? Or do you need to bring in more staff, right? Because of the PPP, did you keep more staff than maybe you needed to in the US? And there were some other grants in Canada as well that came out that maybe helped put more money in your bank than maybe you've had in the past. Well, how are you gonna hold that and actually be able to use that for the right priorities? 
that's going to really cause some slowdown and a lot of strategic discussions in your head, maybe with your advisor or your leadership team to figure out how to move that forward. So that's why I want you to get more detailed in the line items, really understand what is in every expense, because can you cut it? Do you need it? Do you need to bring something back? And the historical of just laying out what we've done before and upping it by a few percentage points is not necessarily the right strategy with so much unknown happening in the marketplace. You want to connect the other areas of the business back to this financial plan. A big thing that I see happen is they build the people build the performa, they go off and build the sales and the marketing and the leadership and recruiting plan. They don't connect it back to the financials and make sure the budgets are fully connected and it truly is a seamless engine that allows you to take flight. It's very, very important that you've done that. And the plan is not finalized. You have to promise me this until you see that even your worst case scenarios, your cash at the bottom should not go below your minimum threshold. And it may be, I can't figure that out. Great. Then go take capital now and get it in the bank and have it behind you in case this comes. It'll be the best insurance policy you ever made. All right. Do not just risk this and go, well, I hope we hit it. Otherwise, we're in trouble not the way to run a business. The way to run the business is a lot more data oriented and very secure. And the way to do that is to make sure you have enough cash in the bank. So this performa, it's all great to make the strategic budgets and decisions, but the most important line is at the bottom where it shows you what that monthly cash is. And that needs to be at a certain threshold, a little different per business. If you're interested in figuring out your threshold, we've got some great webinars in our community platform that you can go watch under CEO webinars on financials, which we break down how to identify a cash threshold. So this is the performa, and this is the financial engine piece. Let's move now to actually breaking down this propeller in a little more specific. So again, for purposes of time, I, I could teach for eight hours on how to really run a really killer planning uh, element, but I'm giving you the cliff notes that'll help you get started. You've now built out the initial performa. You've connected that back to your vision, your annual goals. You're searching for KPIs. Remember, that's what you're doing. You're filling out all this planning and data to identify your key PIs, your leading indicators that are gonna help you achieve your objectives. So on the sales side, I'm building out my sales planning. What am I doing? I'm taking the revenue I want to generate and I'm flipping that into conversions and metrics through my sales pipeline. I wanna get down to the number of leads I need. If I'm an e-commerce or I'm a product business, it might be the number of website visits. Lead, what you qualify as a lead is very different depending on the industry and depending on the type of business. Keep that in mind. But let's say it's a B2B business. I know there's a lot of people on that are B2B. When you connect the needed revenue to sales conversions and metrics, you're trying to just get from a revenue divided by average order size, pushed it all the way through the metrics conversions of the sales process, be a little more conservative. And then you want to kick out how many leads do I need to actually hit that revenue objective? It's always different per business. And if you're struggling, this is exactly what your advisor can help you build out. You get to the number of leads. You're now ready to go to marketing. Marketing is now going to let you connect leads from the sales plan to the lead sources. Where are these leads coming from? Are they organic website? Are they SEO? Are they social ads? Are they, are they I was going to say networking events, probably not the best example right now. Uh, but what are all the different tactics that are being utilized to drive these leads and that way you start to get very specific number of leads coming from where on a monthly basis or weekly basis, depending on how really how big is your widget. If you have a high frequency, look weekly, it's more controllable. If you don't have a high frequency, I do monthly. It's a little more, just makes a little more sense, a little less planning. You're also going to allocate your marketing budget. You're going to pull in the marketing budget from the financial performa, and you're going to dictate how much of that budget are you going to put towards each of the sources. That way you start to understand your cost of acquisition and it starts to give you the framework of how you're going to spend, how much can you spend to generate a lead? That becomes your lever that allows you to figure out how much to invest into marketing to then backfill through your sales process to connect to the revenue. You're halfway through, you're done with the growth side of the propeller. Now we're going to go to the capacity side. We're hitting this leadership section and what I'm going to ask you to do is connect the marketing, what you need to generate via marketing and what you need to generate for sales to be able to maintain the pipeline. Do you have enough marketing and salespeople? How many marketing and salespeople do you need in your organization to maintain this? This includes for some of you that are solopreneurs or maybe one and two employees and you're still trying to keep all the sales on you and you're wondering why you're not growing. It's because you're in the way of the growth of the business. 
So again, remember my comments early on in your mindset, not overly optimistic, you know, not, you know, you need to have a funeral, not too negative. Get yourself level headed and really explore what could this look like to take on a larger capacity and who would I need to bring in for that, et cetera. The last piece of leadership that you have to do is the revenue fulfillment. Take the revenue from the financials and go in order to fulfill this much revenue, if it be a product line, if it be a service allocation, doesn't matter. Just run your analysis to figure out how many people do I need in order to fulfill that much revenue? Am I top heavy right now? Am I, am I understaffed? Figure out where you're at. And then the last step on leadership is build out development needs for each person. List each staff member and identify the two or three things you really need to focus with them on as you're going through this planning. Key kind of pro tip, you're gonna connect that to support your year-end review. That'll already give you the framework so you have those two or three things you wanna to guide towards that are gonna help you get the business to the next level. Again, I could spend two or three hours more even on each one of these, but I'm just giving you high level and how to connect this all through to find your KPIs. And this leads me to the recruiting side. It's gonna allow you to pull in the staff needs from the leadership plan, and it's gonna allow you to then predict the attrition on people. So what, how this works is you now know leadership, how many people you need. Okay, how many people you need to recruit? How much attrition should I expect? I need to make sure I have a plan to recruit through that attrition, not deal with it after it happens. Not the right way to run a business. And then you're gonna work through all the recruiting metrics and the pipeline metrics of conversion and how you're gonna have a bench full of candidates that you can pull from so you're proactive in your need of attrition versus reactive. Again, these are the key elements that create a business to really massively jump in growth. And it's how I currently run the business, which is what has allowed us to get our growth. So these are the four propellers. You've got sales and marketing on the growth side. You've got leadership and recruiting on the capacity side. The last item there is the productivity. Again, just think through what I'm doing. I'm building the financial performa. I'm then building each plan for 2021, all in pursuit of my annual goals, which gets me motivated by my vision. I'm now connecting productivity. I'm gonna list out every person's role in the company, including yourself. I'm then gonna write down what are the key performance indicators for that role in person. Based on what I'm seeing in my analysis and where I see the gaps and the most controlled metrics are, I'm gonna pick one or two key, key performance indicators for each person in that role. I'm gonna connect compensation to those key performance indicators, FYI, so that way I can get everybody tied in. I'm then gonna categorize all of the priorities and tasks for each of those people and put an estimated time allocation of how much they will spend on each of those priorities or tasks. So if it's sales, these are the three things they do. This is how much time I think they'll spend. This is how I know I have enough capacity and to double check my data on leadership. Also for me to lead my people, it gives me confidence to go, look, these are the three or four things that are most important. This is what you need to work on and allows me to really drive through the business to get the performance that's needed in the organization. The last piece on this is just knowing you're going to have to shift and confirm time allocation to make sure it's realistic within the plans. So don't be surprised that you're gonna jump back and forth between all the plans to get the puzzle to work out, which is why you wanna connect them all the way through. And again, our advisors can help you with this. So you're through now actually working through these different elements of the, uh, of the planning process for KPIs identified. You now should leave with KPIs not only for yourself, but also for each person in the organization. That's the level I would expect you to get to. And again, remember this is like an October, early November thing that should already be in place. We're now moving the in initiatives need to get prioritized. So what are the pivots based on that analysis? What are the pivots or shifts or changes you want to achieve? For those of you who've worked with us for a while, these are our roadmap items. This is what we're doing, by the way, with most of our clients. We're walking through this process over and over and over again. But this is the initiatives that are now prioritized. What is it that you want to go change in the business? I need to change my sales pipeline process, or I need to build out something different for this, or I need to really go focus and find who my two or three leaders are in the organization for future scale. Again, three to five is generally what I can manage at a time. Just identify what's needed in Q1, just so you understand these are the priorities. This is what we're gonna kick the year off with. So again, I just wanna take 30 seconds. A lot of you probably have one or two initiatives in the back of your head, and I just wanna get them on paper. Go ahead and take a moment and just write down what are a couple of those initiatives you think you want to change. And I know they're not necessarily rooted in your KPIs right now, but I'm really curious, just let you write a couple of those examples down. And again, a couple examples if you're struggling, new sales approach, identify your future leaders, 
shift product, add a product, move more, move more vertical or horizontal in terms of growth. There's a lot of things you could choose that would be an initiative that you want to go implement in the business. Give everybody just a few seconds here to dump that out of your head. And I know you're still writing. So we've thought about the vision. We've thought about these long-term goals. We've really written that out clearly in a way that we can articulate it to ourselves and our team and something we can continue to come back to. We've laid out the ideal macro goals. Maybe they changed a bit once we went through our KPIs and identified those by going through that framework I showed you to separate each part of the business. Now that I have these KPIs per person, I'm gonna identify what are the few initiatives per person and what are my initiatives as the business owner that I'm going to lead and drive through the organization? And hopefully you have just one or two of those written down. That leads me to my final last one here. And this is really what's the initiative implementation. It's the strategy. This is the order I build anything I implement, by the way. What's the strategy? What is the process we're going to follow? What are the automated systems we can build to make this actually happen? What's the procedures we need to write down in order to train people on? We train them on it. And now what's our leadership plan to see this initiative all the way through? This is just a framework that I personally follow. I found it's been extremely helpful for me. Also, for those of you starting to catch on, this is a lot of what our advisors are doing when they're walking through the process with you and they're brainstorming or working on something with you. They're checking these boxes and going through and that's what it makes it seem so organized. I'm now giving you these tools so you can utilize this in your business when you're going through the planning phase. So those three or five initiatives would maybe have like a one or two page write up lock, locking down strategy, process, systems, procedures, training, and leadership plan. And now I'm finally done planning. And it's gonna pivot, it's gonna shift. I'm gonna review this every month and it's gonna be trending out differently every time and recalibrating to hit my macro goals. That's what I'm gonna try not to move. This year was a fun game of that for me. After everything that happened with the pandemic hitting, it was fun to keep problem solving back to the same goals and figuring out ways we had to shift, but we had the planning framework in place that we could do it very quickly, which is what allowed us to be so nimble. A lot of you probably had some of that same experience, others maybe not so much, and you're excited to get to the next level on planning. So some of you may see this and go, gosh, this is really overwhelming. How am I gonna do this? I'm just getting started. Just start with option one and two. Just get that going. That'll be a step ahead of where you've maybe been in the past. Work with your advisor on this. Others, you've been doing planning. Maybe you jumped on today because you were just really curious what would be different or could you get a different framework of how to approach it? I hope I hit those as well. But I know some of you have been doing this for so long, you're actually trying to figure out how to get to the next level, which is now collaborative planning. How do you follow this process? How do you implement this with your team? So I want to launch my final poll here. How much collaborative planning do you have in your business? I'm just curious, based on who we have on the call today, let's go ahead and launch that poll so I can get an idea so I know where to speak towards is it just you for now? No one's really involved in your planning. Is it you, but you're hoping to shift that this year? Do you have team members that are helping provide plans to you? Uh, or, and otherwise, do you have teams actually already providing teams and you've already been doing this roll up for quite a while? Give everybody just another few seconds. Looks like we got about 50% of the audience. There we go. Pretty spread, we can go ahead and publish that just for purposes of time. Um, but a lot of people are looking to shift into this. So a lot of people are really curious about just how to get started. I have a great framework for you on that. And then there's a few others here that I'm seeing are saying, actually, I already have team members doing this. Um, I need to figure out how to, how to manage that. Uh, and just a few then that actually have leaders who are getting the plans from their members. So it's a third level, that's where it gets really complicated. Let's keep going for time here, we can end that poll. So. Again, there's three ways to look at this. When you plan with a team, or is it because you're, you know, you lead yourself, or is it you're leading everyone, or is it you're leading leaders? Uh, if you lead yourself, it's probably a solopreneur business, or you have one or two folks that wouldn't be a part of the planning. You're able to delegate and run them. Um, you just get to do the planning on your own. You don't need this collaboration. If you're leading everyone, you definitely want to start to identify how your people can present plans back to you and how to incorporate that in your business. If you're leading leaders, that means you have to teach your leaders how to get the plans from the team up to them and then they roll it up to you. And so then you got a two tier approach. So obviously it's very valuable to collaborate. You're gonna create buy-in. You're gonna help build motivation when team, you know, for the team so it's part of the goal setting. That way they're motivated of why the goals were what they were. 
you're all going to be working towards these common goals and this shared vision. It's going to feel like a shared plan. You're not going to feel like you're the only person trying to drag this thing along. And then all, lastly, it's just easier to hold accountability and it's much easier to align on why were the KPIs and the initiatives what they were. So this process I'm going to show you, it's a very simple process. I call it the W planning process. Think of it from the place of leadership is up top, team is down below. So this, you may have two of these. You might have yourself and then leaders, and then you may have teams below it if you're in that two-tier system. It's the same format. I just want to walk you through how this works. Context is number one. So you as the owner are going to give the team or the leadership team context. Here's where I'm thinking we want to go. Here's what the vision is. Here's what the macro goals are. Here's my context. What are the questions you need answered, team member A, in order to go build your plan? Let's align on what you're going to bring back. Let's be very clear. I'm giving you context. They're not just shooting in the wind and you're going to deflate them. Now they have a somewhat of an idea. They feel more comfortable. They're now going to go build a plan for you and they're going to bring that plan back to you. You're not going to tell them yay or nay. You're going to review it. You're going to look at it. You're going to seek to understand. You're going to explore to make sure you feel confident about the plan they're bringing back to you. And you're going to set it up as a separate time. Again, remember mindset. Don't fold it into some other meeting. Now you're going to integrate. This is the hardest part as the owner. You have to get all these plans to talk to each other and add up to your plans and make sure they all flow in. It takes a lot of bit of work. You want to explain this process that you're going to take the time to integrate that plan, but then you're going to come back with some proposed changes. That's when you now bring it back to your leader or to the team who made the plan and go, based on this, you're going to share some higher level objectives. We need to shift this, this, and this to make this work. And now your goal is to work with them on their buy-in. And their job is to then let you know when they are fully bought in. Do not start until they tell you I'm bought in and they view it as their plan. Now, again, I could slow down of all the ways to go through these four steps, but this is just a simple framework you can steal. And I would just show this framework to, the, to your team members and go, this is what we're going to do. And again, you can pull that off the deck if you go back to rewatch this, or you can just take a quick screenshot right now so you have it. Either way, uh, make sure you're using some type of shared communication to show them how you're going to set up this collaboration. And again, Think about the timeline. This is even that much more important when you're collaborating. When you're going through that process, I want you to follow through and help them realize you need them to have their plans done in October. So you're, I'm just in front of you to get this set up and get some times on the calendar. My biggest piece of advice is figure out who you're going to do this with and just start scheduling meetings with them to kick this off in October. And that'll force you to go get number one, number two, and part of number three done whatever part you have to get done in order to take them to give them some context. They can then work on that through October or maybe early November while you're finalizing number three. That's the integration. You bring them all together. That's when you pick the initiatives based on what all the metrics are flowing into. And then you start getting them excited in December to start building out their plans for Q1 to hit those implementations. So it's a two-stair approach. You're going to ask them to help you with number three and run their metrics. You're going to work together during the integration phase to prioritize it. And then in step five, you're going to ask them to plan again and put together their initiative planning. So that way you don't have to do all this work. As you get larger, it's impossible. You have to start to push this through the organization and it will create a more aligned culture and help drive performance. So if you want to kickstart collaboration, Casey, great information, super helpful, very tangible, awesome. But how do I actually get going? Formally review your planning process with all your collaborators. Show them that model. Lock in the dates for each stage of the planning process. Discuss the format and deliverables of each stage of the planning process that you'd like, and then schedule time with each of them to collaborate through that process. If you do that by, again, context is delivered, you then give them the plan, or sorry, you review their plan, you then have an integration meeting, and then you plan their buy-in, which is the initiative build out. If you have those four meetings, that's the system you can run from now to the end of the year, and you will just see a complete shift in ex experience in terms of your collaborative, plan collaborative planning approach. A little tongue tied there. So that's the content today. We slowed down and we talked about mindset, we, getting in the right place, being very conscious of distractions. We talked about planning methodology. I gave you a really clear framework that you can just follow. It's very helpful for me. We use it all the time with our clients. Take that. You got a chance to play a little bit with the workshop just to get your head moving. But now I just slowed down and walk you through the collaborative planning process. 
Now, one of the things I mentioned when we first started is we wanted to leave some extra space today for Q&A since we moved away from the round tables just due to some logistics things and not going so well with trying those. So I wanna open this up to the room. Feel free to jump in the chat. What's a question that you wrote down that you would love to get answered? Um, something that I talked about today or is more specific to you. We're gonna take about 10 minutes here and then I've just got two or three final slides to wrap up on and we'll get everybody on their way. So jump in the chat if you have a question. Don't make me sit here two or three minutes in awkward silence until somebody asks the question. <laughs> Elizabeth, that's a great question. Um, if you have two businesses, I, I do run them separately. Um, so I, I also have multiple businesses. I am used to that experience. Um, that is the only thing I could share without knowing a lot more detail there, Elizabeth, would just be to give you the advice of this. If you're doing all the planning, you're doing this all wrong. And if it's because you're the only person in both businesses, my, my next question, like, why do you have two businesses? Um, but if you have a team that you can pull from in both these businesses, which is what I'm going to assume based on this scenario, you would be wanting to really pull that into the operators to do a lot of that planning and really focus on how to get them doing more of the planning versus you. So then you can roll up. And then sometimes just for fun, I do do a high level plan where I pull everything up into one. So hopefully that helps. Sebastian, working as a small team, three to four people, how do you define those time and meeting without having the vision and plan lost between all the noise that is exchanged between the team? Sebastian, I think what you're asking, correct me wrong if I'm on chat here, but I, I think what you're asking here is like, if you have this small team, how do you actually keep them aligned with the vision and the plan through this whole process. And I'm not sure if you're talking about through the planning process or if you're talking about post, but the only thing I can share with you is this, a very simple tool that I use is when you're trying to get these three to four people, make them share their vision, make them share it instead of you sharing it because that's how it gets lost. But if you're pulling from them, what's your vision? Where are you going? I always just think of an organization as a breathing mechanism. There's times a leader to breathe out, but there's also times to breathe in. So the more you can ask the questions to seek to understand and pull it in, the better situation you're going to find yourself in. Um, and if I didn't answer it fully, Sebastian, rewrite it and maybe I'll get it. Kara, how do I stay focused on the plan throughout the year? <laughs> Whole other session. Short version is this. Go in your calendar and schedule a two-hour monthly trending meeting. Give you a hint. You could ask your advisor to do this with you. I know a lot of our clients do that. And force yourself to re-strategize and update that plan every month based on data that is happening after every month. And that'll allow you to keep problem solving and give clarity and focus to the plan that you're driving towards. But please know that's a whole other session. Uh, Lisa, should the KPIs come from the, five, come from the five parts, one from each section? Not always, Lisa. Sometimes, you know, again, I love that propeller format because you just think of, you go up in a plane, if that propeller right, that, that we're talking about, if it's all out of whack, meaning, you know, sales is really strong, marketing is really weak, et cetera, you're going to have the most turbulent, you know, uncomfortable ride. So you may get you through your planning, Lisa, and realize, wow, three or four of these blades are really built out. I actually feel good. I'm, I'm going to just trust my team to run these. I don't need to spend a lot of energy on this, but this is really suffering. I need to have three KPIs from this one section. So it truly is about prioritizing. And again, that's why I love using the advisor to go, hey, look over this. What do, I need to, what do I really need to focus on and get aligned on that just to have an outside perspective? But don't limit yourself and put yourself in a black and white box to say it's one per. It's usually actually not the case. Um, it's usually focusing on the biggest route that will give you the biggest lift of the business. Uh, Reva, what happens with the PP loan forgiveness or lack there of swings? <laughs> yeah. Well, the PPP, the big fear, Reva, you know, and for, for the Canadian folks know what we're talking about, this is a, a big government grant that came in the U.S. Um, the biggest thing is actually make sure you allocate enough cash for the amount of taxes. Definitely know you're going to pay taxes on all that money you just took. Um, so, you know, whatever amount you got, if I were in your shoes, I'd put 40% of it in a savings account because you're going to have to come up with it for taxes. Now, I've heard the government's going to be very favorable and give a long-term payback on taxes if people already spent all the money, but I can't validate that. Obviously, I'm not in charge. So what I would encourage you to do is you pull it out of their revenue. If you did implement it as revenue, I don't know why you would have, but don't view that as uh, revenue in. And when you're, that's why you get into those expenses to make sure, can you actually afford this with cash without the PPP? You don't want to just let your PPP keep going down. The 24 week mark for most ended already, or it's getting ready to end depending on when you took the money. 
So you really shouldn't allocate that in 2021. So it's actually more about just making sure you've pulled it out and you're not accounting for that to be able to afford your bills, which is why cash is so, so important. A um, couple more updates will come out on that once we get it, but the government is just screwing around and can't make up their decision. Um, Patricia, we are B2B and there's a vast difference in their size, scope, length, and revenue in the 40 to 50 projects we run. I feel like setting KPI really challenging using averages. Any suggestions? Yes, good question. Um, try to segment down instead of running an average on just your overall product, do your best to take those 40 or 50 and couple them into maybe four or five different product categories. You can actually list those four or five as separate revenue line items. And when you run the plan, Patricia, just break it down where you run an average. And then what you'll do is, you, cause you may even have different sales conversions of, you know, every, every single product may sell easier or less. And I, I know it could still be all over the place, but try to go run the analysis to figure that out. That'll let you now run four or five different sales plans and then roll them up based on different product offerings and be more accurate with your average order size. So that way you're more in line when you're actually trending and you're better on your projection side. That didn't answer the question. Make sure you pull that back in um, to an advisor to figure that out for you. Kyle, I operate in a service-based business, so my employee is skilled at this trade, plumbing, but the industry isn't known for innovative thinking for employees. I was in the trades. I understand that. Most just want to go to work. What are some ideas for brainstorming and gaining good planning ideas in this case? That's a good question. You know, sometimes plans can be really simple. It can be three bullets, Kyle. Sometimes it can be as simple as, hey, how many hours are you going to fulfill, uh, even though you're going to mandate it, but how many hours do you want to fulfill? How much do you want to earn? Can we put some type of small incentive around a quality scoring system, for instance, you're now integrating them into the plans. And although it's two or three simple bullets of a plan that you review with them, you start to bring that individual into that conversation and their connectivity and buy into the organization is going to skyrocket because you incorporated versus just delegating these are the hours you work. And hey, you better do a good job with customers. Two very different approaches to leading a business. Okay, I'm getting close to time. I've got some really good questions here. Kind of keep continuing. I want to answer some of these few. Um, but before I do, let me hit a couple quick updates. And then for those that can stick around, feel free. But to be respectful, those that need to jump, they can jump. And keep in mind, this whole thing's recorded. So if you saw a question pop up on the chat that you know I'm getting ready to answer here in a few minutes, you're going to be able to circle back into our community portal, rewatch this, fast forward to the end, and you can watch these questions. So community updates, just a few. You probably just got a really great context. Take this back to your advisors. Slow down and talk about this with them and plan out the rest of your four to six months of how you're going to put this in the planning and then how you're going to kick out in 2021 and see exceptional growth. Reminder, JustWorks, one of our biggest fans, they have sponsored all of these webinars. So they have given us a small budget to be able to put additional resources into this. So want to give them a big shout out. They are the PEO we use for all of our HR needs. Encourage you to check them out if you haven't heard of them. If you want to watch this again, again, go back to the CEO webinar course underneath courses right here when you log in on the back end and you'll find it. You can see all the courses we follow. This is an example of what it looks like if you want to get some of that additional training in the courses. There are some good planning elements around like development planning on their leadership. There's a planning course under sales. So if you're like, I really wanted you to go further on how to do it, we have the training already built for you on how to do it if you walk into those courses. Our next CEO webinar, October 14th, we're going to be talking about performance culture. Jeff Rendell, one of the vice presidents of the organization is going to be joining me. He is the expert when it comes to building out these performance cultures. I'm really excited for him to share his, his thoughts. And I'm going to be walking through some cool systems. So encourage you to jump into that and sign up for that. You can do that on the events section of the portal. And then the big, the big hype here, Catapult 2020, we did announce it just went fully virtual. Really excited to have this. We took a lot of the money that we were able to save without having the venues. And I went and hired killer speakers. Rory Vaden, author of Multiply Your Time, Sarah Ross, The Vitality Factor and Leadership, even got Marcus Collins, Digital Marketing Techniques. He was actually Beyonce's digital marketing manager. We've got a huge lineup we're setting up. So if you haven't signed up for Catapult, go sign up in the events section, grab it. We're gonna have one-on-one -on -one networking in the platform. We've really invested in this thing. So I really hope you take the time to ch check out which of these sessions you wanna jump into. They're gonna be fantastic. But seats are going fast, so make sure you get a spot. All right, we've got to the end. Here's what I'm asking for. We're gonna launch a link. Don't worry, I'm gonna come back and answer these questions, but we're gonna launch a link. If you could jump into our platform sometime today, just get the browser up. And what I'm looking for you to do is just capture in this discussion link we're gonna give you on the back of the portal, what was your learning? If you do this for me, 
It allows me to build much better content over time because it lets me understand what's important. You can also throw other questions we didn't answer in there and I'll do my best to navigate it. So if we haven't already, let's launch that. I think we did. I see share your takeaways. You just want to click that in the bottom left and go share with us. What did you really learn? What did you really take away from today? And with that, we're at our time. So for those that need to jump, you got the next meeting. I get it. Those that want to stay on, I'm willing to stay on for another five or 10 minutes. And I'm going to keep answering some of these questions because I'm loving some of the, the focus that people are bringing to planning. All right, so let's keep moving. Um, looks like these are more just trying to understand uh, how this works. Uh, Patricia, great. Reva, just saying thanks. Awesome. Jeremy, jumping in to help support that. Great. Sebastian, Sharon, thanks. Uh, all right, here's the next one. So Sebastian, you're asking, small team, we communicate on everything, real time. How can we make the vision and planning somewhat you know, special and get the team excited about it? I guess your answer is, we you said, breathe in. <laughs> that is generally what I was going to say. What I will tell you is, um, here's a simple exercise if you're ever trying to bring vision down to your team that I love to use, Sebastian. I like to say, design a day. So I like to work with somebody and say, I want you to just write a short story of your day from the moment you wake up to the day you close day you go to sleep, the hour that you go to sleep. And I want you to think about your lifestyle. What house are you in? Where are you at? What are you doing? Um, do you have, you know, what's in, what's in the picture? Um, when you go to work, what are the types of things you're doing? What are you so excited about? What breaks you up for work every day? When they write all that down, it's such a cool experience when they write it and then they share, they read their stories as a small group. One of the coolest exercises I've seen done around vision. Um, I do it a lot with the clients that I've worked with and I've seen a lot of success with that. Uh, in terms of bringing leadership teams together. There's a bunch of different ways to do this, by the way. If you do some research, also talk to your advisor, they'll help bring you some more. But that's my personal favorite, if that helps. Abby, if I have debt, do you recommend I hold off on making big payments so I have more cash for this awkward upcoming year? <clears throat> Excuse me, or hurry up and pay it off as my original plan? <clears throat> that's a hard one <clears throat> to answer generally, Abby. I'd wanna see the full performa. So whoever your advisor is, bring this question to them. And if they can't figure that out, I'm happy to take a look at it and give my own you know, opinion to it. But here's what I'll share with you. It's all about cash threshold. Go run the plan. If you're going to be building up more profits, it's going to allow you to pay down that debt. Focus on the cash threshold. I think you know, it's in our mind that we have to cleanse ourselves and get all this debt off of us. Debt is good. I know some people disagree, but Good debt because you're profitable and you're using that cash in the business to grow and, and continue to run the business is not a bad thing as long as it's balanced and you have the right amount of debt that makes sense for the how big the organization is and the amount of profit it, you're pulling off on an annual basis, not on a monthly basis, but just generally on annually. What I personally do is I just make sure I never pass below that cash threshold and I wait until I'm hitting that cash threshold and then it get, builds my confidence where I go, wow, I have an extra 30 grand in the bank. I'm going to take that off on debt. Okay, next month, maybe I have 10 grand more. I'm going to take that off on debt. And I let that dictate the numbers versus my gut feeling of I got to get out of debt. So I hope that helps in your situation, but not sure the exact uh, setup that you're offering. Daryl, thanks for, for jumping in with Sebastian there. Uh, Patricia's good. Um, Elizabeth, okay, great. Um, Jeremy, we're good. Okay, now I'm seeing all the individuals struggling with guessing how much product we can or will sell in the US for our projections. Little too general for me there, um, for me to be able to help support you on that in terms of how do you do that. Again, the only piece of advice I can give is get in touch with your advisor, slow down with them and tell them this is really, really important for you that you figure out how to productize this. And if our advisor can't figure it out, they'll bring it up through the teams. We've got a system for that and we'll figure out how to be able to bring that projection forward. All right, that's a wrap everybody. I know a lot of us stuck around, thanks so much. Um, again, jump into this, share your takeaways, share what you've learned with us really clearly, and what else do you have questions on around this 2021 planning? Because I'll make short videos, I'll make sure we bring as much resources as we can without boring us all having to get on another Zoom call. So uh, everybody, take care, have a safe, safe uh, next uh, couple of weeks, and we'll see you all back in October when we talk about performance culture. See you, everybody.